Several uh, folks have asked for an update. Uh, if you could provide a general update in terms of your recovery from the uh, ankle injury that you were rehabbing when the season was paused on the uh, 12th of March. Uh, yeah, I I'm feeling really good. Um, obviously, given the circumstances, it's a bit tough to tell on ice-wise. Uh, I have a pair of skates at home that I haven't yet put on, uh, but I have been training very hard. Um, I've got a pretty sweet setup at home. I'm pretty fortunate. Um, it's where I trained the summers. Uh, Everything was kind of in storage. I hadn't really been anticipating an early start like this, but uh, I've been able to, to push it pretty hard, um, and it's responding well. I'm feeling better and better every day. I've been running. I've been active, uh, jumping on it. No issues, no ill effects. So uh, I, I would imagine uh, I'm, I'm very far along, if not completely healthy. Okay, uh, that kind of lends to uh, Kyle Bukakis from uh, Sportsnet asked, um, given that you were one of the few senators – who was not required to immediately self-isolate. I, I think you just touched on it, but have you had a chance to skate whatsoever since uh, the middle of March? Yeah, I, I have not skated. Um, you know, I think that was more of a personal decision for me. I am very conscientious of having an eight-week-old eight, eight, eight son at home, and uh, I don't want to be exposing myself to anything that I could potentially bring home and, and in turn expose my wife and Miles to. So... Um, you know, having the setup I have here, obviously you can't replicate hockey, but you know, uh, I'm pretty much in a full training regime right now. Uh, uh, so it's kind of a personal decision to, to not be on, on, the, on the ice. Okay. And the next question, uh, again, I think it might be something that you just touched on, but Brent Wallace at TSN is asking, uh, with where you're at in your recovery, would you consider yourself now cleared to play? Um, he, I, I don't know if I can make that judgment. Uh, on my own I certainly feel like I'm extremely close if not there so um, you know given the season probably isn't going to start you know anytime really soon uh, I would imagine I'll probably be ready to go okay the next question is from uh, Mark Bessard at the Dua he's asking if you feel fortunate that you weren't on the team's trip to California especially in light of having a newborn at home yeah that's uh, Mark hit the nail on the head there um, a little bit of serendipity for sure. Uh, obviously, you're bummed out being injured, but you know, looking back now in hindsight, uh, I'm very, very thankful and fortunate. Um, you know, at that given time, it kind of seemed like LA, California was sort of the epicenter of things in North America. Um, you know, and I had that in my back of my mind, having, you know, actually not being on the trip, um, and then coming back and and having the the guys, uh, you know, kind of be exposed, a certain number of them fall ill. Um, I, I was very, very thankful to be here at home. Uh, you know, my number one concern and priority in life right now is the health and well-being of Tara and Miles, and that trumps everything for me. So uh, I'm very, very thankful. Okay, the next question um, is a follow-up from Brent. He's asking what it was like to see as many uh, teammates as you did fall ill on account of uh, COVID-19. Yeah, it, I mean, what a strange situation. You know, I'm, it's, it's nothing new to hear that, but uh, it, it's just something I, I've never thought I'd ever have to think about or, or, or worry about. Uh, Tara and I have had this discussion numerous times, kind of trying to digest everything and make sense of it. And it's nothing in your kind of wildest imagination you would imagine happening. And, you know, luckily, I'm in a field and a profession where it's a lot of, you know, young, healthy men um, who are kind of in, in peak physical condition. And, and, you know, it seems like that's not the most at risk group, but again, there's, you know, more and more kind of news and information out there that the young people are being sick. So I think at the time I wasn't, you know, as concerned knowing that these guys are, are, are in great shape and, 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 and very healthy, but it's still alarming for sure. Uh, you know, this, this situation, this, this virus, it's all so new and there's not a lot known about it. And, you know, when it's people you care about like family uh, and they get sick with anything, you're going to be concerned. So, uh, thankfully it seems like everyone's on the mend or if not healthy, uh, fully already. So, uh, thank, uh, thank God for that. Okay. Our next question is from uh, Bruce Gary of post media. He's asking in light of the fact that you're from Ottawa, and that you've seen some of the effects of the virus firsthand. What uh, message do you have for folks here with regards to social responsibility? It's a great question. Um, you know, and I think the message has to be consistent and clear. And, 
you know, we all have to make sacrifices here. Um, you know, it's our civic responsibility and civic duty uh, to make sure we're looking out, especially for, you know, the most vulnerable members of our community, the people who are immunosuppressed, you know, the elderly, people who are very susceptible to this virus. And, and it, it is more likely than not going to be life threatening for them. And, um, you know, we all have to make a sacrifice here. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, you know, for a lot of us, we're very fortunate and it's not a hard sacrifice. It's we stay inside um, and we're responsible and we're empathetic and compassionate and, and understand that there's people out there who are depending on us being safe and responsible and self-isolating. So let's all band here together. Let's suck it up for a bit. Uh, let's do what's best for this community uh, and make sure we're taking care of our own. Okay, <clears throat> a follow up uh, from Bruce here. He's asking if you feel that it remains realistic that hockey will resume this season. And if you do, he's asking your thoughts on what the first game back would feel like. You know, that's an interesting question. Um, realistic, I, I mean, yeah, sure. I can see it, uh, you know, a, a scenario where we do get started. Uh, you know, there's a lot at stake for us as a league you know, as players, as professionals. But, you know, I think the bigger thing for me here is, you know, ice hockey is a game. It's a sport. And I understand that, you know, sport happening is, is that, you know, kind of that return to a, to a sense of normalcy. And it can be good for people in, in kind of coping and getting over this. But, you know, I think what's e e even more important are, are these, you know, tangible health results, you know, where people are health, healthy and safe. And, and that's my priority right now. And I think, you know, as a players union and as a league, um, you know, we really have to plan uh, for anything going forward. And, 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 and if we do get the green light, certainly you want to be ready to hit the ground running. Um, but at the same time, you know, you don't want to sound tone deaf. Um, you know, we're a, a group of extremely fortunate, privileged people um, who, you know, aren't going through much hardship right now. Are, are, are we losing revenue? Sure. Um, are we going to take a hit for it financially? Sure. But we're still in a much better position than 99% of the population. And I think we need to be cognizant of that. Um, you know, the sanctity of the game and playoff tradition, you know, that means nothing when people in, in our communities are, are losing their livelihoods, lose, losing jobs, struggling to make ends meet financially. You know, lo local businesses are floundering. Um, all that stuff should take priority right now. And that's my focus. Um, you know, hockey's still going to be here after this pandemic. Uh, um, and we have a lot of passionate people in our union and in our league um, who are going to do what's right and get this thing going uh, when the time is right. Okay. And did you want to touch on your thoughts of uh, it's a bit of a hypothetical, but it, what, uh, how you feel that first game back might look? Yeah, sorry. Um, you know, it's going to be strange for sure. Um, Oh man, like I don't, it, it's just so interesting uh, because there's so many guys in different situations, you know, uh, let's say we go back and play, we've got what, 10 or 12 games, I think it is, uh, likely not in a playoff position. Um, you know, there's RFAs, there's UFAs, what do you do? You know, do, do, you, do you dive in front of a puck and, and put your face and your body on the line? I mean, it really is an interesting question. Um, you know, there's going to be guys who, who by all rights, you know, are going to want to ease into things. Uh, you can't, go right into a game speed and expect guys not to get hurt. So it's going to be strange. Um, I think guys will be pretty un understanding out there. We're all going to play hard. We're all, we're all going to compete. Um, but I don't think it's going to be anyone out there trying, trying, trying to hurt each other. Okay. I got a follow-up question from Haley. Um, <clears throat> she's asking if you can speak maybe as you reflect on the season that was, and also in looking forward, um, if you can speak about your experience as someone who was looked upon as a veteran leader for what is and uh, or what was and what is a rebuilding team? Uh, well, I appreciate that, Haley. Thank you. Um, I take a lot of pride in being a leader for sure. But, uh, you know, our work ethic as a group uh, is just night and day, I think. Um, the for, you know, in training camp in the first month of the season, we were all like, oh, man, you know, these practices are so hard, so tough. How are we going to survive this? And then next thing you know, uh, you know that just kind of becomes the norm. Uh, you come into the rink and expect not nothing less. That's how hard you work. Uh, you know, that's just the standard we we've set for ourselves and the standard that DJ and the coaching staff have set for us. And I think that's going to, you know, be a big thing going forward here. Um, 
because that way when you have guys come in who might not be on that same program, um, the collective group sort of bends them to, to, their, to, to their will, and that's how you create culture. Um, and I think we've taken a huge step in that right direction. Uh, obviously, the losses suck. Uh, we don't like that. We don't want to keep keep going down that path. But, you know, it's a talented group here. A lot of young guys who are going to find their feet um, and be impact players in this league. Um, and I think it's exciting times for going forward for sure.